What's up? How's everybody doing? I'm going to make a series of short films about camera basics, explaining to you in the simplest of terms what the settings on your camera do, how to use them, and what effects they have in your photos and your films. In this first film, I'd like to talk to you about that odd series of numbers on your lens or your camera screen called f-stops. But before that, let's roll the intro. Boom! Your image is made up of three very important basic settings. This is the first one I'd like to talk about, mainly because it's my favorite one. It's the one I use most to manipulate how the viewer sees my work. Now these three settings, they exist together as one. If you take one away, then the image ceases to exist. An f-stop is a setting on your camera that determines how much light is coming through the iris of your lens onto your film or onto your sensor. The iris is made up of a series of blades that open and close, creating a smaller or larger hole. It's what we call the aperture. It helps us achieve two things. It makes the image lighter or darker. However, it also changes how much of that image is in focus. If we take a quick look at the dictionary, this is what it says. Aperture, an opening, hole, or gap. A space through which light passes in an optical or photographic instrument, especially the variable opening by which light enters a camera. The f-stop scale is a geometric sequence of numbers, the sequence of powers of the square root of two. This may sound complicated, and I don't think any cinematographer or photographer actually remembers that. So let's make this a lot simpler for you to wrap your head around. Sometimes you might be asked, what aperture did you have when you took that awesome portrait? Other times somebody might ask you, what f-stop are you using? It's basically the same question. Another example is if you go to your local camera shop and Alan behind the counter asks you, do you want a fast lens? What this refers to is the f-stop. The bigger the hole or aperture, the faster the lens. What this generally means is it performs better in low light situations because it needs less time to capture more light. As a rule of thumb, the faster the lens, usually the more expensive it is. However, Nikon, Sony, Canon, they all make nifty, they all make nifty 50s, the f1.8s, which is a pretty fast lens. Now, if you're looking for something faster, like a f1.4, f1.2, or even something totally insane, like f1, you're gonna have to think about remortgaging your house because they get ridiculously expensive. When I started photography, all I could afford was a f4, f5.6. Those were pretty slow lenses, especially in low light, but I did what I could and saved up enough money so I could buy something that was f1.4. If you have a big aperture, it's usually referred to as being wide open, so the hole inside your lens is very large. If you have a small aperture, the hole inside your lens is tiny. However, the tricky part is the f-stops, which is really just the scale we use to measure the opening of the iris. If you have a big aperture, the f-stop will be small, like 1.8. Now, if you have a small aperture, the f-stop will be big, like f22, for example. Once you get to grips with the f-stops and shutter speed, going manual is really, really simple. Fun fact, the f-stop of the human eye varies from 8.3 in very bright sunlight to 2.1 in the dark. That's pretty cool, huh? These are usually the f-stops you'll see on your lens or on your camera screen. These are the most common f-stops there are, however, numbers in between them, which are half stops and third stops. If you go up by one, you're basically doubling the amount of light coming into your lens. If you go down, you're halving the amount of light. You'd have to compensate by using your shutter speed or your ISO, which we'll talk about later in a different film. Anyway, enough of the techno mumbo jumbo. Let's talk about why I'd shoot wide open or not. I shoot wide open 
if I want to bring attention to something or somebody in my shot. So the eyes in a portrait or a person in a crowded street. So you've just got the person and other people are just whizzing by and they're completely out of focus. I also shoot wide open if I want to hide something like an ugly background. Shooting wide open is generally very beautiful. It's very aesthetically pleasing. However, it's a little bit tricky because the focus is literally in a few millimeters. So if your subject's moving or you're moving with your camera, it can render your image useless because the focus is not where you wanted it. It's in a completely different plane. I, on the other hand, love a good challenge and shooting wide open isn't it. It really bores me because every image is just so beautiful. It's The other problem is every lens has its sweet spot and shooting wide open is not it. The sweet spot is usually from about 5.68 to 11, where the image has edge to edge sharpness and it's not just situated in the middle. It's surprising, but you'll actually find F8 to be sharper than F16 or F22. And that's all down to the sweet spot of your lens. Closing down my aperture to about 5.6, forces me to think about what I'm doing and not only concentrate on my subject but also on the foreground and the background on my photo. It gives your photos that extra little few layers of funkiness. If you've been shooting with auto and you'd like to experiment more with aperture to give your image a little bit more zoomth, give you a little bit more control, then all you have to do is switch your dial to AV or A and that's aperture priority mode. In this mode, all you have to worry about is aperture. The other two main settings are still in auto, so you can experiment as much as you want with your f-stops and you don't have to worry, stress out about having a badly exposed image. If I'm shooting with a friend and he says, yo Phil, let's go up a stop. I think I just spat on the camera. That means let's open the aperture up. Now if he goes, yo Phil, let's close it down. That means we're gonna make the aperture smaller. So we're going, for example, from f5.6 to f8, f11. If I'm shooting a portrait and I want those eyes to pop, I'll be shooting at 1.4, so the eyes will be just in focus and everything else will be out of focus. Now, if I'm shooting at a beach and I want that lighthouse four miles down the road and the sand by my feet to be in focus, I'll drop all the way down to say f16, f22. Some lenses, they go even down to f32. That'll make sure that everything will be in focus. Depth of field. So the area of your image that's in focus, this is what f-stops are all about. When we say shallow focus, then that means that only the petals on the flower you're photographing in the park will be in the focus. When we say deep focus, then not only the petals, but the grass in front of it, the trees behind it, and quite possibly even that Rottweiler running towards you in the background will be in focus. To achieve that blurry effect, where only your subject is in focus, and it's all nice and dreamy and Hollywood, just step that f-stop all the way up so it's at f2.8, f2, f1.4, as, as wide open as you possibly can, and it'll be all dreamy, marshmallowy, crazy, shallow depth of field all over the place. It'll be perfect. So I think it's really important for you to get to know your aperture. See what works best for you. Some people love shooting wide open. Some people hate it. So flip your switch to aperture priority mode if you've been rolling on auto. And in the next few films, I'll show you what shutter speed and ISO do to your image. On that note, keep it real. Catch you on the other side.